Hi, this is Peter. Hi, this is Sandra. And we are Medievalist.net. And today we're talking to you about the... Borgias. Right. Yes. Another fantastic, exciting, sinful, deceitful episode. Yes, we got a lot happens in here. Um, so, Cesare loses his groove. Let's talk about that. Uh, this whole kind of um, episode where he kind of just uh, goes to deliver the terms uh, from his father to... Katerina. Yeah, Katerina Sforja. Uh, um, doesn't... Uh, it, it seemed to have been like, well, like... I was expecting more, like, like that if he, he went there, he had some sort of grand plan to... or, But in the end, it's just that, you know, well, she decides to sleep with him and he just can't resist, you know? And... Um, and they seem to have this little tryst, um, but in the end, she's like, so I'm, well, I'm not going to come bend knee to the Pope, so no. And uh, then he takes it out on her cousin, so we just have to be there. I thought it was interesting, because usually, you know, at the beginning of the episode, Rodrigo's like, oh, clapping him on the back, like, oh, haha, were you out last night helping? Mm -hmm. Ha ha. And so Cesare is played up as this, you know, smart moves, guerrilla warfare kind of guy. And he's given the simplest of tasks. Go bring this female from her house to Rome. Yeah. I mean, the guys out there bombing and doing guerrilla warfare and ambushing mm -hmm. those guys who hit the nunnery a couple episodes back. Yeah. But he completely botches the go get Katarina Sforza. Yeah, I just thought that was funny how he... it's like the simplest thing ever and he screwed it up. You know? So he... He gets there and he ends up sleeping with her and she's like, oh, just stay one more night. Which, of course, gives her, you know, obviously there are no phones, but gives her the ability to, you know, do the Renaissance thing and, and get her cousin Giovanni there in time to uh -huh. say no and have someone to back her up. So I think Cesare, for the first time, really lost his groove. Yeah. Like, it, it, it seemed really out of character for him to me. It seemed like, it didn't, it's almost like he... He was very passive in this episode, mm -hmm. which, you know, like, I'm thinking, is he going to do something? Is he got some sort of backup plan? And apparently he didn't, so. No. They, um, and uh, so, yeah, I was kind of like, it, it, it lost me a lot on that, in that bit of the, uh, of the, of the show, that kind of storyline, so. And, mm -hmm. but he does kill, you know, the. Yeah, at the end, he's like, you know, because uh, Giovanni Sforza, who was married to Lucrezia and accused of being impotent, is obviously so pretty bitter about it. Mm. And um, then Cesare kills him. And, and that kind of ties into the next thing about, well, the, the end scene. How I love, and one thing I love about the Borgias mm. is how they contrast mm -hmm. two scenes at once. Two very dramatic things will be going on at the same time. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just like, you know, you're watching Cesare murdering Giovanni Sforza. And then you're watching, you know, um, a lightning bolt hit yeah. the Florentine yeah, it's like church. The, and the, the, you know, like the you, catastrophe. It is catastrophe gorgeous. and... Um, you, you see, like, I like that, you know, where you see, like, Rodrigo kind of, um, at that moment of kind of crisis, you know, he kind of, you know, you see, like, a kind of inner good in him trying to save the child, you know, he's telling everyone, get back in here, let's save the people, and, like, everyone's scared, and everyone's, uh, you know, thinking this is the wrath of God upon him, and it's, you know, and, and, he, and he kind of shows that, you know, like, deep down inside, you know, you know, he has a heart, you know, so, but, um. Yeah, like I liked, I liked that I, little boy. Yeah, yeah, and I, boy. and the I liked it, how that scene kind of all went down, and then like afterwards, you know, he's kind of, you know, about the sins, you know, like uh, there must be some sort of sin that we that we're being punished for, and obviously the connection is the the sin of the murder by his son. So, or just you know, I kind of saw it as the church is falling down around his ears. Mm -hmm sort of as a foreshadowing for the problems that are going to have happen with the Borgias in the future and how Cesare, you know, botched this task. So he had this murder and the murder for once in his life wasn't the easiest. 
It took him a long time of strangling, choking. Well, no, uh, yeah, knifing. Like, yeah, like he's. It seemed... wasn't like one of his more in and out kind of. <laughs> no, no. Well, it's like it seemed like a, you know, that kind of botched, uh, passion. You know, a rage of passion kind of murder that. You know, like, you kind of see from the porches, but... I do have to say I love the line where he's like, I told my sister I would cut out your heart, but I can't seem to find uh, yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Like, of knife course, but he's knifing, knifing him. Of course, he's knifing him in the stomach, which I don't see. The, that was awesome. But the, uh, yeah, that was good. Um, and then we have Della Rovere out canvassing the Dominicans for how to uh, poison Rodrigo. The, uh, it, it came across to me as a kind of a funny scene, like, where he's kind of talking, like, and, well, you know, someone's got to do it, someone's got to, you know, play the ultimate price, and, like, you can see, like, all these, not, you know, monks kind of just slowly walking out the door, and, and then you get the, like, naive young one who's, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll do it, you know, for the good of the church, and for, I'll go to heaven, and things like that, so. I like those scenes in Florence, too, where they go to, um, where Rodrigo goes to the Medici house, and then the one of the Medici's starts in, imitating Savannah Roll, and he's like, hell and fire and yeah, rinse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like, you know, it just the whole thing that's going down in Florence. Savannah Roll is a very persuasive um, speaker. Yeah, yeah you know, they, they, I, I used to say for American politics, if only. If only the Democrats and Republicans could have Savannah Rolla, oh, yes. <laughs> that somebody would win. The, uh, no, he's so persuasive, but um, yeah, I just yeah, uh, yeah I, I really I like, like his character. Yeah, he's, he's, he's that charismatic guy that you know. If you know about Sa Savannah Rolla, you know he is a very charismatic kind of uh, you know, like he you know, like who else would be able to get like the Florentine citizens to burn all their stuff? You know, so the uh, yeah. So they're planning to. Poison the Borgias. We're gonna see how how well this comes off because um, obviously you know uh, the last attempt didn't work. So this is um, going for attempt number two. Yes, yes. They... And then we have the strange thing that, although small, I did want to discuss is um, you know Venazza, uh, Lucrezia, and Julia all going to the brothel and plotting to refurbish it. I kind of. Thought that was a bit of a throwaway scene. Oh, uh, yeah, like, I guess they're just trying to, you know, it's a slow trying to get all the, to show that all the other cardinals are just, you know, they're at the brothels and they're going to use it to, against them at a later time. But it's, uh, it's almost like they're trying to find something for them to do, so. Kind of, and I, I'm not really buying the three of them working together. Mm -hmm. I understand Lucrezia is loyal to her mother and she likes Julia for Nazi, but Vanazza and Julia, I'm... Yeah, like, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see why they should be getting you know, working together. Getting along like some kind of extended family. Um, that was strange. Um, you know, and then uh, we have another um, great scene that I, I thought I would talk about and we oh, okay. disagree on. So, Micheletto, yeah. he... While Cesare is out, you know, romancing Caterina Sforza, we find out Micheletto has a lover and he's gay, which blew my mind. And I, in a good way, I have to say, um, he is, bar none, the scariest character on the show. You know, Rodrigo's scary, he's powerful. Cesare's diabolical, but Micheletto's just kind of, you know, he's an assassin, and he is very detached and unemotional from it, and he does his job well, and you, you should fear him, and he's, I like that he is a gay character, because, you know, I'm sick and tired of a lot of shows that have, you know, straight protagonists, and then they throw in the token gay character and it's a wimp or a weak character. Here you have the most feared, dangerous guy on the show and you see that he's in love with another man. Way to go. I thought that was awesome. I made my day. You know, like when I saw it, like, you know, it's um, like I, th I think I've, I've seen how this show has been like last few episodes they've been slowly showing that Micheletto is um, di a disturbed individual 
I think like and the I in the idea is that you know he is um he he kills for pleasure he kills for um he's like a serial killer that kind of character he's not you know like while the Borgias themselves are kind of um the uh, you know they they kill you know to defend themselves to you know uh as the politics um you know you can you can see Micheletto, you know, as kind of slowly kind of um, gone from this kind of henchman character, and it's interesting that you know, like he, they are playing him up more and more. So he is, you know, but he's becoming, you know, this kind of diabolical character, who, you know, I like, like I don't see him lasting much longer in this kind of role in the in the show, just because. Like I, I see him. He's going beyond the boundaries of uh, of what um, you know the other characters are going to do. Like he seems like he's, he's about to go crazy. So, and then the idea now that well, he he is like that because he's gay. And like he says, you know, at at one point, you know, to his lover, you know, uh, the world's made. You know, the world is like this. So you know, I was so you know, is made. You know, is not the way I want to, and that's why I'm so like I do what I do. It's almost like he's getting revenge on the world. And so, like, I, I didn't take it as, you know, oh, you know, oh, this is a kind of, like, um, a great, you know, uh, character for, you know, the gay community. Because to me, it's like, oh, you know, um, the mentally disturbed person, the most mentally disturbed person, it has to be gay. And the reason because, you know, he's, he is gay and that makes him mentally disturbed. So, um, like, I, I didn't like... I didn't like that where like I can I can you know I can see your point like in the, like he's not the the typical gay character you see on main programs that where he's effeminate and um, a bit of a joke um, you know he's a scary character but at the same time it also plays up other gay you know um, stereotypes that we see in the media uh, the, the the you know the kind of the, that threat to you know the public. A, you know, threat to you know anyone because he's he's so crazy. So, um, I don't see that in the media at all. And usually, if you're talking about something about child pedophilia, it's mm. usually older men that are portrayed. But I would argue that every character in this show is unstable. Every mm. character is diabolical. Mm. Diabolical. Katarina Sforza. Mm. You have even Lucrezia trying to kill her brother with a chandelier and a burning candle. I mean, that's not stability. That's no argument for stability. Cesare is diabolical. Um, all of them are diabolical. Mm. Micheletto just happens to be a little more so because in the whole show, mm -hmm. he's not given another job. All of, them, yeah. all of them have other jobs. You know, one's a cardinal, one's a pope, one's a lady, mm. one's this. Micheletto's only job is an assassin. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, to say he's the most, uh, he's not a great representation for the gay community, well, you know, here it is. His only job on the show is to protect Cesare and kill people. I think if he was more, if he had another position, like he was a lord of blah, 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 it mm -hmm. might even it out a bit. Mm -hmm. But I, again, they're all diabolical. The whole show mm -hmm. is about a diabolical bunch of people. Mm -hmm. There aren't really any um g good guys mm. on this show and and here's the great thing he's a gay villain mm. and i think that's fantastic i mean yeah he's disturbed he killed his own father and stuff and but you know here's cesare giving this great quote that like i think describes micheletto perfectly i can't imagine you being born micheletto or dying for that matter and that's how much people kind of fear and mm. fear him mm. he's like you're just like untouchable. He's like some kind of like a super villain. Mm -hmm. And I think it's great. Like they're all diabolical. They're all twisted. None of them are normal. Um, and I would much rather see a villain like him and then have these tender moments where he meets his lover um, versus, you know, mm -hmm. like I, I was telling you during the show that typically you would expect them to make somebody like... Um, Alfonso, mm -hmm. a gay character, um, and you know that I'm just so tired mm -hmm. of. So the fact that he's out there, we know he has a lover who's getting married, and mm -hmm. they they can't be, and he is um, a very sinister kind of strong character. Like he fears nothing, and people fear him 
he's quiet, he doesn't talk much, and he doesn't say anything he can't back up. I, I love it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, who's to say who's going to get killed off? I mean, Cesare could have bungled everything tonight and been killed off. With, he had such a struggle with Giovanni Sforza yeah. that it's like, yeah. that could have gone any way. I mean, so, I mean, all of them do things in moments where they put themselves at risk for being knocked off in the next episode. And Micheletto likes to kill people because, well, really, you know, that's all he's given. Yeah, well, look... That kind of explains him in a like, nutshell. Like, I, I think they're trying to give him a good background because I think that they probably want to lead to something more with him, but I don't... Like, to me, like, he is... He won't be one of the characters that's going to survive. You know, he may survive this season, but, mm -hmm. you know, like... You know, like, in the end, you, like, you know... Uh, as they, you know, they even like uh, slightly follow historical present. He won't be like the one, like he's just one of those other characters, those minor characters that, you know, that get it in the end, you know. But the um, it's interesting how they'll play with him, you know, like because, you know, like they're developing his character, but you know, in the sense, you know, he he there's very little for him to do on his own, right? You know, like the, the we've only seen a few kind of glimpses where he's kind of, you know, like. Um, it was last week where you kind of see him actually his kind of taking that kind of weird pleasure in, in the the killing of, of of the captive um where you kind of see him that he's really way into way into it and now you kind of see him like where you know he meets up um we there's something that you know something has happened between him and his father for him to kill him um i think maybe the implication there was that his father was having sex with him I don't know that that's implied. I, he could have been know, hitting him. Like I wouldn't want to jump to that conclusion until they reveal it. Maybe he was. It, it was just. It was just. SOB, it, right? was, it was just something the in in the scene uh, at the been, graveyard. I well, he could have been an alcoholic, or who knows, right? Yeah. Um, but one of the other things I wanted to point out about Micheletto too is he's one of the few characters that doesn't bungle things. No, no, that's well, you know, he, he's, he's smart. He, he's very smart. He's 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 often the, the like one of the coolest customers, right? Yeah. So, which is is interesting. Like, you know, you do finally hear a bit like on his where he's coming from on this. So it's kind of an interesting. Like, I'm more intrigued into his character now, obviously, and I think it'll be it'll be it'll be interesting to see where they where they take it, um, because like obviously they didn't put all that in just just for. Uh, to have the token gay character. Yeah, exactly. You know, and so. I'm glad that he's built that way, that he's very complex, that he has this lover and then he has this sinister mm -hmm. side. And, I mean, he even said, you know, come come to Rome with me. It's mm -hmm. like, so we can be together. Mm -hmm. While I'm killing well, people, yeah. you can just come and live with yeah. me in Rome. Be my boyfriend. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. You know, which doesn't end up happening. But it was... Um, it just, you know, I thought I thought it was great. I'm really happy that they did that. That they made one of the stronger characters on the show gay. I thought, way to go, well done. Um, so I'm very excited for next uh, the next episode because there's a lot that's gonna go down. It seems like a lot of things are unraveling, mm -hmm. and uh, it's just the plot thickens. Yeah, it will. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, let's. Uh, it'd be interesting to see, oh, like I've, I kind of seen this all with Rodrigo before, where he's I have to repent and and stuff, and I have to be a good person now. But it's you know, five minutes. Five minutes. yeah, yeah, like you know, in the end, like uh, you know, like you know, it might be a little, you know, like well. You know, like, uh, you'll see where they kind of run with that, like, obviously. And then uh, we have a lot more political stuff. And um, yeah. and Savonarola is kind of, uh, I hope to hear from more of his crazy talk. Yeah, exactly. So tune in with us next week for another fantastic, exciting, deceitful, and devious episode of... The Borgias. <laughs> that was good. <laughs>